pink and white bloom in the nation's capital. I think if the seawall is going to help preserve them for the long term. Our DC Bureau has more on the start of cherry blossom season. Healthcare on medical tourists. Our doctor here in the United States makes more than double than any other doctor in any other rich country. The difference in cost between the U.S. compared to South American nations. And students take over the runway. Basically, it's just a fashion show, a lip sync battle, and an art competition. Fundraising for a cause. These stories and more coming up on Newsbreak. Hello, South Florida. I'm Jason Arrow. I'm Montana Gaspari. Today is Wednesday, March 20th, 2024. Live from the Lee Kaplan School of Journalism and Media in North Miami, this is Kaplan News. Caribbean crisis, the capital of Haiti, is in great danger. What's happening in Haiti's capital is of major concern at the U.S. Capitol as well. Reporter Pamela Correa from our D.C. Bureau is live in Washington this morning with more. Conversations continue to happen at the White House to address the escalating situation in Haiti. Florida officials are getting ready for the potential arrival of Haitian immigrants. Florida Senators Mark Carubio and Rick Scott sent a letter to President Biden demanding that he share his plan to handle a possible influx of Haitians in Florida. The Senator's position? Do not open the gates to what they say will be countless, not properly well investigated and approved foreign nationals. Biden administration is focused on evacuating Americans stranded in the conflict zone. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said the first evacuation flight out of the country's second largest city, Cap Haitian, was successful with more than 30 U.S. citizens airlifted to the states. Sullivan also added that over 1,000 stranded Americans have reached out to the authorities to leave Haiti. But we've been working all day long to remove a number of individuals on two separate flights out of Haiti to the Sanford Orlando International Airport. Um, unfortunately, the, the situation on the ground is so volatile that we have not been able to successfully complete that mission. Gypsy Metellus is the executive director at San La, which is a Haitian neighborhood center in South Florida, and she expressed the importance of helping Haitians in need while protecting our country. It's in our best interest and all of our best interests to ensure that the border is secure. With that said, I also know that we need to ensure that we have a process by which we either welcome people, take them through a process that assesses their situation to determine if they are entitled to the, the benefit that would be the, the whatever cure they're, see, they're seeking, safety that they're seeking. The Biden administration will not be sending U.S. troops to Haiti, but they intend to give an extra um, an additional $25 million for humanitarian aid. This is Pamela Correa reporting from Washington, D.C. for Kaplan News. This morning, the Department of Homeland Security has reported that migrant border crossings have declined since the start of 2024. USBP agents detained about 4,300 migrants at the southern border yesterday, which is a huge drop from the 9,000 daily encounters agents faced last December. The drop in numbers is being credited to the United States' ongoing high-level talks with Mexico. When it comes to healthcare in the U.S., it can get pricey. That's why many people end up traveling to South American countries for medical procedures. Capital News reporter Hilary Santino Espinoza has more on the treatments. The United States is well known for the medical treatment. However, the price of the health insurance is increasing year by year. That makes that Americans are looking for other options, such as traveling to other countries to get medical treatment and avoid the higher prices. Medical tourism is increasing day by day. This happened because it's not difficult to find countries that offers various procedures at 30% or 65% of the cost compared to the United States. I did have one experience where I went to see my dentist because my, I had this pain in my wisdom teeth and he pretty much told me to go to my own country and, you know, get surgery over there. In 2017, more than 1.4 million Americans sought healthcare in a variety of countries. The numbers of U.S. medical tourists and the other from other parts of the world is expected to increase by 25% per year. The average cost for each medical visitor 
is between $3,800 to $6,000. There are three main reasons why, is, why that happens, and it's because payroll, medical supplies, and also um, the technology that we use. Uh, a regular doctor here in the United States makes more than double than any other doctor in any other rich country. Citizens are expecting for better solution from the state regarding health insurance. Until then, they will continue searching for better options for their health. Meanwhile, the Americans are still looking to other countries to travel to get medical treatments. It is estimated that the price of the health insurance it will increase 7.9% during the next decade, according to Estatista. This is Jerry Centeno reporting from Kaplan News. Police in Florida have confirmed that former NHL player Konstantin Koltsov died in an apparent suicide. Koltsov was the boyfriend of popular tennis player Arena Sabalenka. He also spent three years in the NHL with the Pittsburgh Penguins from 2003 to 2006. The Belarusian star player played on the Belarus Olympic team in 2002 and 2010. Most recently, he was a coach for the Russian team. Koltsov was only 42 years old. This morning, the White House and Environmental Protection Agencies issued a warning to state governments and water facilities in regards to defending a potential cyber attack. The cyber attack is targeting municipal water facilities, and officials have even said that, quote, basic security precautions are not in place at these water facilities. President Joe Biden has emphasized the need for improvements in cybersecurity. Cherry Blossom Peak Bloom has hit D.C. earlier than expected, but more than 100 cherry trees will be removed from the tidal basin after the season ends. Kaplan News' D.C. Bureau reporter Sofia Bolivar has more details on the reconstruction of the capital's iconic spot. The National Park Service says that rising water levels here in Tidal Basin are threatening to kill off dozens of cherry trees. Around 140 trees will be removed for the reconstruction of the seawall. With the rehabilitation of the wall, it can make the area more enjoyable and less smutty for the large crowds who visit the capital every year to see the exotic trees. The trees will be cut down in late spring or early summer to make room for the $113 million seawall repairs. The project is expected to take three years to complete, but 274 Japanese trees will be replanted, and most of the trees removed will be turned into mulch to conserve the roots of the replacements. I think if the seawall is going to help preserve them for the long term, that that's a, a really good project to invest in. You know, with climate change, who knows, it could get even worse, so whatever we can do to protect our national treasures like the cherry blossom trees. One tree in particular, nicknamed Stumpy, has touched the hearts of many for its perseverance to bloom despite its lack of branches. It has become a symbol of resilience here in D.C. Clippings will be taken from Stumpy to create a genetic offspring and will be planted in the area after the seawall repairs. In preparation for the 250th anniversary of American independence in 2026, this is going to be part of a $500 million project to repair, repair crumbling infrastructure here in D.C. Reporting for Kaplan News, I'm Sofia Olivar. The candy aisle is looking a little bit more pricey after this. A recent report from Wells Fargo has identified a global decline in the supply of cocoa beans as the main cause behind the rapid increase in chocolate prices. Climate-related factors such as tree diseases are worsened by every rainfall, which contributes significantly to these supply challenges. In West Africa, cocoa farmers are facing additional hurdles, which include drought conditions and intense winds, which were caused by this year's El Nino phenomenon. The cost of cocoa has more than doubled in the past year. SpaceX is nearly ready to give its record-setting rocket another test flight. That's still ahead, and so is this story. To me, this is the best way to showcase like uh, our silly side. Students going fashion forward for an annual event. Newsbreak will be back in two minutes. really use a new tablet. I just don't have the money. Let me ask you something. Do you have a Pell Grant? Yes. You do know you can get a free tablet, right? Did you say free? Yeah, free. It's simple. And the application is done in the store. I could really use a tablet. Go get, go get one!
another satisfied customer. Stop by Panthatech in the Graham Center at FIU MMC today to speak with one of our associates to get your free tablet. Type 2 diabetes can have a big impact on your life, but how can it be prevented? Well, the first step is knowing if you have something called prediabetes. Take the one minute risk test today at doihaveprediabetes.org. Going Vogue, FIU students take on the runway. Sisterhoods and brotherhoods of FIU sororities came together for Strike Magazine's second annual fashion show. I had the opportunity to meet impactful students striving to make a difference in the world through fashion trends. From head to toe, style was the center of attention at Florida International University's Modesto Medique campus. Strike Magazine, a student-run publication, teamed up with the woman of Alpha Omicron Pi, a sorority at FIU, to host their second annual fashion show. The theme was beachy summer days, and the audience was in for a fun night. Basically, it's just a fashion show, a lip sync battle, and an art competition. And we do all of those, all of Greek like participates, and then we also have like the strike stylist style for the fashion show. So we collaborate in that, and it's just a bunch of young people basically coming together. Three judges from Strike Magazine evaluated from center stage as each sorority modeled and showed off their trendy fits and dance moves. From cowboy props to the Taylor Swift eras, each group gave it their all to win the hearts of the judges. To me, this is the best way to showcase like uh, our silly side and like it, it's really an event that showcases how we are as sisters. Very silly, very fun and uh, it's a great way to raise money and I think it's just such a cute event. It's all about striking the pose here at the Summerfest Fashion Show at the Graham Center Ballrooms. While the models show off their outfits on the runway, the event centers on raising money for a specific cause. All proceeds will head to the Alpha Omicron Pi's philanthropy, the Arthritis Foundation, to help spread awareness about the disease and fund more research opportunities. Majority of the groups performing incorporated props into their routines. And I got to speak with one group to hear about their unexpected experience. So the first time we went, we were really excited, but then the music was very low, but us on stage, like you kind of just think it's on you and like your nerves that are making the music low. We got off, turns out no one could hear. <laughs> so we were asked like, hey, what happened? And then we got to go again with the music super loud, which is what we intended in the first place. The sorority's goal with this fashion show was to raise money for those struggling with juvenile arthritis. According to the Arthritis Foundation, this disease affects about 300,000 children in the United States. Space, space fans are going to have to wait until May to see the next SpaceX rocket launch. Last Thursday saw the third, flight, third test flight sorry, where the rocket flew for about 40 minutes before it broke apart during re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. The company's chief operating officer stated that engineers will work on perfecting the reentry process for the upcoming flight. You're watching Newsbreak, and we're coming right back. The black truck. Hey. Christina from accounting. Yeah, hi. <laughs> hey, I used to date a girl named Christina. Oh, really? Yeah, and then she dumped me for my best friend. You want to see some photos of them that I took? I don't. I thought we talked about this, buddy. Buzz and overshared again? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to call a car. That's a smart idea. So, yeah, I know. That's why I did it. Hey, you're going to get back to the top of the mountain. Does that mean I'm going to get back with Christina? No. Oh, no, no. That's all the time we have for news break today. I'm Valentina Gaspari. I'm Jason Harrell. Get more news anytime on capitalnews.fiu.edu.